Good evening. Welcome to this edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show. My name is Leon Jones. Tonight's topic, the Democrats need to take this L with dignity. The Democrats need to take this L with dignity. For the last two and a half months since the presidential election, the Democrats have been throwing tantrums. And so many tantrums have gotten outright violent. They've been destroying property. They've run around and said Donald Trump has been an illegitimate president. Let me throw a scenario at you. If the Electoral College was tied 269 to 269 and Hillary Clinton had more popular votes. She still would have lost. Why? Because the party who is in the majority, and this is in the House, would elect the president. It's like football. There are tiebreakers. This is why you have the head-to-head. If two football teams are tied, then you go to conference wins, There are different ways to break the ties so we don't get into the conundrum. The reason why the popular vote does not elect the president is because California and New York and the other urban areas in the country would elect the president. In other words, if you're paying taxes, you need fair representation. The Democrats are not being classy with the legitimate election results. They're running around, getting on a microphone, talking about how bad Donald Trump is. I don't agree with everything that Donald Trump says. He's the president. You know, it's funny with the woman's movement, how they talk about Donald Trump being a misogynist. But let's go back to when President Clinton was elected. He was a womanizer. How come these feminists do not talk about Bill Clinton? The reason why is because Bill Clinton fits their narrative. He also pandered to them. Now, I'm not against any type of protest. But protesting should be peaceful, not violent. What you have is a bunch of millennials, a bunch of washed up feminists who are unattractive, who believe that women deserve superiority instead of equality. But they don't want the responsibility. Then you have the millennials who've been spoiled, rotten kids, living in their parents' basement without any responsibilities either. Then you go back, you've had 50 Democratic congresspeople, and I list those congresspeople in a link on my Facebook page. And when 2018 comes, don't vote for them. And John Lewis, congressman of Georgia, is the top one, because he said Donald Trump wasn't a legitimate president. I live here in Indiana, and you folks down in Indianapolis, Congressman Carson, who's in your district, he did not go to the inauguration. Make sure you don't vote for him in 2018. You want to know how to beat the Democrats? You get him out of power. See, what the Democrats don't understand is that Socialism, communism, Marxism, and tyrannical government. That's right, I said tyrannical government were defeated during the election. This is what they want. They believe that government should rule society. Well, we're a country that is a democratic republic. We have freedom of speech, 
but we are under the guise of the law. The Democrats want to change the process to fit them. The problem with the Democrats is Hillary Clinton was a flawed candidate. And I know you're going to hear women out there say that we didn't want a woman president. No, we didn't want a shady woman president. And I'm not saying women do not have the capacity to manage. But as far as leading, women cannot lead. The reason why they cannot lead is because they lead with emotion. They're very tyrannical. I remember I worked for a lady at my organization. She was very tyrannical. A lot of the men didn't like her. So guess what? She was out the door. Because she didn't understand anything about engineering. She was just put there because of affirmative action and some hookups from Indianapolis. I'm not going to mention her name. But if you're listening to this video, you know who I'm talking about. Because you work with me every day. You have good women out there. You have good Democrats out there. But this woman's movement was against masculinity. All things masculinity. I know that there have been groups of people who've been oppressed in this country. Black people have been oppressed. I don't believe black people have gotten their just due. But the women in this country and the millennials in this country, particularly of the Caucasian and even the black woman, have benefited off the system of government. They get more financial aid money, more scholarship money. It's easy for them to get loans for houses. They can get jobs. They can get divorces even if they are the ones who cheated. They can get child support. They can get alimony. They can file false rape charges. They can file false domestic charges. Whatever a number of these women want, they get. Because the government panders to them. But this video is not about women, but the women's movement is part of the tantrums that are being thrown by the Democrats. You go back to the millennials. Ever since Donald Trump won the election, you've had these millennials, and particularly the young college kids who, who don't have a job, they live in their mother's basement, they don't want a job, or they tried to find a job, they didn't do a good job finding a job, they went to school and majored in silly curriculums, curriculums that don't have any marketability or any demand for the public. Talk about sociology, women's studies, social justice warriors. And I believe a lot of these protests are being funded by billionaire George Soros because he wants to change his country into a socialist country. I I'm going to tell you this. For all you Democrats who believe socialism and communism and all these tyrannical governments are livable, why don't you try going and living in one of those countries? Now I can tell you, I've been over to Europe, and the living conditions are poor. See, when you try to make everything equal, everybody is equally miserable, and the government is the only one who benefits. We don't need a bureaucracy running the country. Government is to protect our rights. It's not to take wealth from the harder working individuals to give it to individuals who don't work hard. Joe Biden said you need skin in the game. And when you have one sector of society that's not doing anything but benefiting off of what the other productive citizens are doing to keep this country going, that's not fair. And I don't think it's fair for the middle class people to pay these corporations who fail. That's called corporate 
welfare. That's not fair either. Government should have the programs in place as a safety net, but the safety net should be something temporary. shouldn't be something that's ongoing for you to live on. That's why we have jobs. Now, unfortunately, the economy is terrible. But how do you make the economy right? Well, you keep the jobs here. And for your Democrats, your policies. Look at Clinton. A lot of the jobs are gone because of NAFTA. I was in the military. And the reason why I got out, and I got early, because at that time when President Clinton was in office, he was cutting the military. That wasn't good because you had a lot of military veterans who were looking for jobs. But let me tell you Democrats something. When the Republicans lost twice to President Obama, you had the Tea Party. The Tea Party, of course, disagreed with all of Obama's policies. However, they were peaceful about it. And this is the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. The Republicans do not throw a tantrum. They get a candidate lined up for the next election. That's what you all should be doing. But you all don't know how to be classy or professional. You're indignant. You're barbarians. Everything you want to do when it comes to protesting resorts in violence. You had people like Bill Ayers, a terrorist. You have the radical feminists. You have the radical black nationalists. And what you all do, you try to bully people into thinking the way you want them to think. That's not how you debate or have a dialogue. And the problem with you Democrats is you don't want dialogue. You're the most intolerant people. In fact, the Democrats in this country are the most racist people. But what they know how to do, they know how to utilize the rhetoric to make everybody think it is the other side who is the racist. But the Democrats are the most Antarctic people out here, they talk about government. Well, let's look at pro-life abortion. Well, you hear the pro, not pro-life, pro-choice. The pro-choices are always going to tell you, well, it's my body. You don't want government interfering in issues that you believe in. So why should the government interfere with capitalism by making me redistribute my wealth for these government programs that I don't benefit off of. You Democrats need to grow up. Got to take the L. You lost. The process is always going to stand. Now, had Hillary won, it would be nothing said, nothing heard. Republicans would have, okay, where do we go wrong? And what's going to happen to you Democrats, and I said this before, you're going to lose more seats. And for you 50 Democrats who didn't attend the inauguration, I don't care what party or what kind of disagreement you had with the president. The president is the highest office in the land and it should be respected. You didn't respect it. Therefore, you shouldn't have a right to have your Congress seat or you have a seat in Congress in 2018. And I hope people who are watching will vote you out because you don't need to be in power because your policies destroy the country. They don't help the country. This is why during the Obama administration, we had more people on food stamps. We had less jobs. Yes, the numbers came out. We had at the end of his eight year tenure, a 4.7% unemployment rate, but I believe that number was deflated because you had individuals who just gave up looking for work. I believe it was much I believe it was around 12, 13 percent because the jobs that were created during the Obama administration were all part-time jobs. There weren't any jobs of significance. There were jobs that were low skilled. I can tell you right now the economy were that good. Jobs that I could get like in the hospitality industry, making $8 an hour. I could go right ahead and get them. But I can't because I'm competing with other individuals who are looking for a job. And without a job, 
you can't provide for yourself or your family. I'm just using that $8 an hour job as an example. I'm not looking for an $8 an hour job. But you need to understand the example that I am presenting because we have a conundrum in this country. The economy is poor based on bad policy. And the reason why government can't run the economy because businesses aren't going to invest in the economy because of the high corporate tax rate. And this is why with NAFTA, businesses left this country and went overseas because they can produce goods much cheaper. Now, did that do any good for America? No, because jobs left. And when Clinton got in there, we were also going through changes from industrialism to a service-type economy. This is when you had all the bogus dot-coms that came up. But getting back on track, Democrats, what you have to do, you have to understand the process during all the elections. You didn't have a problem when your party lost the House and Senate in 2014 and 2010. But you all won the presidency in 2008 and 2012 because your candidate at that time was much better. I mean, I didn't like McCain and I didn't like Romney. The Republicans knew what they had to do. And they are much more classy when they protest. And they're much more classy when they lose elections. Democrats, you can't throw tantrums when the elections don't go your way. With everything that's being said, you want to know who the best candidate would have been who had the least amount of baggage? Out of Trump and Clinton? Bernie Sanders. I don't know anything about Bernie Sanders except he is an independent. He's a devout socialist from the state of Vermont. And here's another thing. When you look at the states where some of these candidates are from, they have high taxes and liberal policies. And as I stated in the video yesterday, all you liberals, and the proof is in the package, you can't run anything. You look at all the cities, they have high crime rate, they're sanctuary cities, they have high amounts of welfare, high amounts of drugs, high amounts of unemployment, bad schools, and bad policy. That's what all of that equates to. So if you really want the country to be in good shape, why don't you start studying economic policies? Because you can't do anything without economics. Every policy should not be based on a government program to try to lift poor people out of poverty. Because your policies, Democrats, keep people impoverished. They keep you on the plantation. And this is why black people are where they are. And, and there's some of it. It's our fault as well because as black people, we won't do business with each other because we can't stand each other because we're very jealous of one another and we have a crabs in a barrel mindset. It is wrong, but that is true about black people and we don't know about politics. Politics is this. You have to have an agenda. It has to be well organized. And well financed. We don't know anything about that. What we do, we go back and forth, forth and back over old issues. We're still talking about education. The public school system hasn't been fixed. We're still talking about jobs. You don't see any jobs in the black community except when outsiders such as Asians, Koreans, which, of course, Koreans are Asians, and you have your Middle Eastern. They're coming in, they're getting businesses in the African-American community, and they're taking the money right out of our community back into their community. And the only other person who is making money off the black community are your black preachers. 
and they utilize the women to make their money. And what do they do with their money? They take it right out of the black community into the suburbs because you have a lot of individuals who are black themselves who don't want to be in the black community because it's already destroyed by liberal policies. So here's what I want to tell you Democrats. Accept the L. You lost. Groom a better candidate who's not going to be radically left. And talk about issues that everybody wants to hear. And the biggest issue should be the economy. What are you going to do to cut taxes? You have to have some tax cuts. What are you going to do about jobs and businesses? That's what you need to talk about. Because Donald Trump won based on the economy. That's what he was preaching. Hillary Clinton was utilizing the same rhetoric about free college, redistribution of wealth that we've heard from Democrats for the last 20 years. Democrats, your policies don't work. Got to stop throwing a tantrum. Have a little grace and understand that you lost. It's not the end of the world. As an independent Republican, I went through eight years of Obama. But I respect Obama because he is the president. And I would stand behind him if he was still in office and we had to go to war. Because no matter what your political persuasion is, this is America. And instead of dividing us Democrats, you should come together and embrace policies that are going to lead this country forward instead of stepping backward into the Lyndon B. Johnson era of the Great Society. And that's it. For this edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show for this evening, Monday, January 23rd, 2017. You can tune into the 401 Talk Zone Radio Show every Monday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Blog Talk Radio. Guest call in number is 215-383-5785. And if you like my videos, please share and subscribe to the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show right here on YouTube. So I can continue to give you quality information for educational purposes from a professional and mature perspective. And on this channel, I don't engage in debates, emotion, social or controversial issues, nor do I participate in drama and unnecessary bickering. Now on this channel, I provide you with sources of education, business, careers, and politics. And the purpose of this channel is to give you the tools to help you understand how the real world works. So I keep everything realistic but positive because knowledge is powerful. And if you have a business or a channel that you would like for me to discuss on Blog Talk Radio or YouTube, please email me at lej6521 at gmail.com. And if you have a comment, please leave your comment in the comment section under the video. But make sure that your comments are pithy, no bloviating, petty fogging, or filibustering if you wish to opine. That's it for this video. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. Remember, please be gentle and respectful to each other, and have a wonderful and blessed night. Good night.